do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of the Gambia according to law. So help, help me God. I, Abu Bakar Fugana, do swear that I will execute the functions of the office of the first class magistrate without fear or favor, affection or ill will, according to the constitution and other laws of the Gambia. So help me God. Of the Gambia according to law. So help me God. I, Michelle Mendy, do swear that I will execute the functions of the office of the first class magistrate without fear or favor, affection or ill will, according to the constitution and other laws of the Gambia. So help me God. So I do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of the Gambia according to law. So help me God. I will so do swear that I will execute the functions of the office of the first class magistrate without fear or favor, affection or ill will, according to the constitution and other laws of the Gambia. So help me God. I came of Kanti, who swear that I will be faithful and bear the allegiance to the Republic of the Gambia according to law. So help me God. I came of Kanti, who swear that I will execute the functions of the Office of the Justice for Peace without fear or favor, affection or ill will, according to the Constitution and all the laws of the Gambia. So help me God. of the judicial administration, judicial secretary and his deputies, uh, your worships newly admitted to the lower bench, and Mr. Kante, our new justice of the peace, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, I'll begin by congratulating your worships first on your appointment to the magistracy as first class magistrates and also Mr. Kante on his appointment as a Justice of the Peace. All of you have, of course, been selected to these very high positions within the judicature following a rigorous process uh, of, of, of examination and evaluation. And we have found you all very much deserving and qualified uh, for your respective appointments. Uh, congratulations, and we wish you a very uh, successful tenure of office. So the magistrates, of course, the magistracy or adjudicating is a very difficult and challenging task. But we are confident following your, your appointments and your, your attachments uh, that you will live up to the, your respective mandates. It's a very difficult task, as I said, to adjudicate. You have to make some very difficult decisions, but that's part of your job as judicial officers. And what is important in this respect is for you to have a reasonable knowledge of the law, which we are confident you have, and that's why you've been selected. But don't let rest on your laurels, as they say. You have to continue keeping abreast of the law uh, in order to be able to perform your, your tasks uh, competently. It's important that you are diligent at your work as well because the workload will be heavy. It is and it will continue to be heavy. You'll have many, many cases to deal with. Punctuality, diligence, and attendance to your work is very, very important. Try to avoid delays in the hearing and determination of the cases that are before you. For as they say, justice delayed is justice denied. And justice is sweetest when it is freshest, as they say. The earlier you do your case and finish with it, the better for yourself and for the parties and for the whole system of governance and, and the rule of law in the country. Uh, avoid delays in the execution of your, of, your, of your duties. Do not be complicit 
in the, the constant, constant request by parties and council for adjournments of their cases. So adjournments have to be justified. Adjournments have to be justified, and if they are not justified, you should proceed with your case. So knowledge of the law, competence we believe you have, diligence at your work, be at work on time, do your task uh, as you should, but above all, above all, be honest in the execution of your duties. Yeah. You, we, are, we, we, we have every confidence about your integrity and you should maintain that level of integrity that you have at the moment. Honesty and integrity is really the most important characteristic uh, of every judicial officer. Every person, but more so of a judicial officer who is called upon to decide disputes between parties, between people. You must do so justly and fairly uh, and honestly and reasonably quickly. And, and we, we hope, we are confident that you'll be, do, you'll be able to do that. Those are three important things you need to pay attention to uh, throughout your career. Continue to be studious in your search for knowledge of the law. Be diligent in the execution of your duties and execute your duties with the highest standards of professionalism, honesty, and, and, and integrity. Uh, and, and then if you do so, of course, uh, you'll earn the respect of, the, of litigants and community, even litigants who have lost their cases. If they know that they, you've done so fairly and honestly, they come to respect you and the community comes to respect you. And that respect has its rewards. Uh, your appointments today and your, your swearing in is part of the process uh, in the judiciary for strengthening the capacity of, of our courts. Uh, we, we are looking forward to the appointment of more local magistrates in order to make sure that the subordinate courts themselves uh, continue to operate efficiently, in fact, more, much more efficiently. We need more magistrates, especially uh, if they are Gambians, uh, who will stay on uh, within the service, hopefully until retirement, or elevation to the higher bench when, when, they, are, when, when they are suitable, if and when they are uh, suitable. So we'll continue the process to look for more magistrates. Uh, as you are aware, the, His Excellency the President has recently appointed uh, through three uh, Gambians to the High Court as judges. Uh, the process there will also continue to strengthen the, the capacity of the High Court. Uh, we are expecting very shortly, by next week, an additional judge from Nigeria on technical assistance for the High Court. And so we will hopefully start the term next week with four new judges uh, for the High Court. That should make a considerable difference uh, in, 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 in the administration of justice. It will only do so, of course, not because of the numbers, but if people apply themselves to, to their tasks and they do so uh, honestly and, and, and fairly and diligently. Beyond the numbers, of course, there are other measures that we are also working on to improve the processes in the courts. The rules of the High Court are under revision at the moment. And we, we expect that by the, by the legal year in January, we may have a new set of rules of practice and procedure for the High Court, which are designed to expedite uh, the process of trials. Uh, we're looking at other processes as well. We expect to have a new e-case manage, management system in place at about the same time early next year, and also to have a, a, a modern electronic system for recording and transcription of court proceedings. Uh, which, which will initially be piloted in the High Court uh, with one, one magistrate's court as well, but which we expect uh, to spread out throughout the judicial system. That should also hopefully considerably revolutionize uh, the process of hearing since the, it, it will dispense with the handwriting, the manual taking down of uh, records of proceedings and the typing of records, etc. All that should make a considerable difference, and we look forward to those two projects uh, coming to fruition. Welcome once more to the to the bench. Uh, we thank you for accepting uh, these tasks, uh, these appointments, and we wish you a successful tenure. As we also wish Mr. Kante a successful tenure as a commissioner for oaths uh, at the local community level, assisting with the legal needs uh, of the community. Thank you very much of the media present. We would like to extend a warm welcome and express our gratitude to each and every one of you. I am honored to stand before you today 
with a deep sense of privilege and humility. On behalf of my colleagues, I express our profound gratitude as we gather to witness the swearing in ceremony of myself and my colleagues, fellow colleagues, as first class magistrates of the Republic of the Gambia. We would like to extend our deepest gratitude to the judiciary of the Gambia, the Judicial Service Commission, and the government of the Gambia for entrusting us with this significant responsibility. With a solid foundation in law, a commitment to justice, and a dedication to uphold the rule of law, we are confident that we will ensure that due process is followed. We pledge to make well-informed decisions based on the law and the evidence presented in the courts. Furthermore, we are committed to making a positive impact in the judiciary by utilizing our motivation, dedication, and skills acquired from our experience in private practice. We are eager to contribute significantly to the legal system and uphold the principle of justice. As newly appointed magistrates, we pledge to uphold the general orders and financial institution of the Republic of the Gambia, the government of the Gambia, as well as the regulations set forth by the Judicial Service Commission. We are prepared to fulfill all responsibilities that comes with our roles as magistrates. Our commitment to adhering to the judge's supplementary code of conduct and the code of conduct for legal practitioners at 2011 is unwavering. We are committed to approaching every tax with diligence and precision, ensuring that no hint of negligence is ever displayed. Our goal is to have a significant impact on the judiciary by collaborating, by collaborating closely with our colleagues and support staff to improve case management in our courts. The achievement of the judiciary objectives is our top priority, and we are dedicated to upholding the principle of the rule of law. As magistrates, we recognize the immense ethical responsibilities that come with our role. We must make sound decisions without bias or influence, knowing that our choices will directly impact individuals, families, and communities. With this in mind, we pledge to handle each case with the utmost care and attention, ensuring that justice is not only served, but also perceived to be served. However, we are aware of the judiciary strategy plan for 2021 to 2025, and we are fully dedicated to collaborating closely with the judiciary to ensure the successful achievement of the eight goals outlined in the plans are accomplished. We recognize the judiciary's vision and mission, which strive to establish an independent, effective, and efficient justice system and upholds the rule of law, ensuring fair, impartial, and timely delivery of quality justice through a competent and dedicated staff. Therefore, we are fully committed to supporting the judicial administration in reaching these goals. In any case, we acknowledge that there is always more to learn and we, are, and we remain open to new knowledge. While we are aware of the challenges that lie ahead, we are prepared and dedicated to upholding justice. Mm -hmm. Our courts are institutions of justice, law and equity, and we are committed to delivering fair outcomes despite any obstacles we may face. To my esteemed colleagues, it is crucial to recognize that no individual should be subject to punishment or lawful suffering without a clear violation of established laws in the proper legal channels of our country. Therefore, when administering justice, it is imperative that we uphold the principles of justice and law, as they are inherently intertwined in our decision-making process, processes. Let us always remember the importance of fairness and legality in our pursuit of justice. Let justice guide our actions towards our common good. Thank you. Merci, Jerejif, Jarama, and Abaraka.